Hello everyone, Christopher Fisher here. Welcome to another Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time video. This is the second of the three. I got the opportunity to play Crash 4 uh, a couple days ago and it has exceeded my expectations. Of course, this is an early build. Uh, thank you very much for Activision for allowing this to actually happen. Basically, I was able to play the game for quite a while. I played it for quite a few hours. Um, and recorded all this footage and I was able to put it into like a three minute clip of you know some of the best stuff they want to try and you know show off as much of the level without just you know showing the entire thing and you know I totally get that I want to show off as much as I can though because there is so much to talk about that I'm gonna run through the footage a couple of times we've got a bonus round here notice that I just thought I'd point that out guys that uh, that little jump there that that belly flop what that means and of course, I talked about this in the previous one, the Dino Dash video, but as you can see here, as I said before, the return of sort of hidden level gems, kind of like Crash to Insanity, is back. And this level is a great example of a level in which you actually really get to see the, this almost the semi-open world nature of Crash 4. Snow Way Out is really interesting because we got to see it from the perspective of Crash like we're seeing now and then you get to see it from the perspective of Cortex and that video will be up as well around the same time as this one. But I highly recommend you watch this one first because when you actually see the payoff to the Cortex one it's really really interesting. But anyway, we have a new mask which allows us to freeze time as you're seeing here and you get to do some really really fancy trickery with it. Personally I absolutely love doing this one here where basically you lower it down, get that jump, get a slide jump, jump up there and get the, uh, the, the you know, I was, I'm just gonna call it the Omega Wampa Fruit but it's actually, there's actually a name for it but I'm, I'm misremembering. But this is this whole level here is just really interesting because I feel like you don't really see this in the original Crash games, uh, you know, in one, two, and three. However, what I find super interesting about it though is what I talked about as well before is that it honestly, the game that I relate to the most in terms of difficulty is Crash One, and by quite a mile. It is a seriously hard level. You see there my death counter there. I've got 10 deaths. The first time I ran through this level, I'm not even joking, I got 61 deaths. I am that, I was that bad at it. There is a learning curve and that needs to be, that really needs to be something that we we talk about. The thing is, because this level is plopped, uh, this is actually in the middle of the game, they've given us a level in the middle of the game, so there is a real learning curve. I have a feeling that if it both, if it's going to be a successful game, which I think it will be, and how they're going to structure things, look at that guys, 151 out of 151, super proud of that. Took me forever to find everything. Um, but the thing is, is that if you know if this is really going to be successful, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see it really kind of cycle through in a way where you know it's going to start off easy and it's going to get progressively harder. Obviously, that's the most yes, Captain Obvious thing I could possibly say. But it's really important that you do that because with a warp room structure, it's a lot more different because you can't really phase it in a way where it gets, you know, like one level, you know, level one to five, you know, all the same difficulty, or let's sort of like warp around, you know, pun intended. Whereas with this whole map system that they're doing for Crash 4, uh, I'm really excited to kind of like master the skills early on and then do this kind of stuff. So this is an example of as well, when you see the timed crates here, we can then jump up here and do that. And I just, it's like so, this bonus round is such a challenge. That's why I talk about being like Crash 1. You see there as well, if I was to do a belly flop at the end of my jump, what ends up happening is I am blessed with the ability to actually get that extra height. So that is obviously returning from the original Crash games. So we had like a little sort of little conference with Lou Studdart and uh, he's works for Toys for Bob, um, one of, the, one of the, the creative geniuses behind this game. And he was talking about how it was actually very, when they were you know developing it they actually didn't take anything from the uh the insane trilogy code however they obviously worked on the game and they've worked on imaginators of course so they i think they had a pretty fundamental idea of how crash works now there are some key differences uh the sliding is a little bit different um i'm still not entirely used to it in comparison to the the, the old way, I think that needs just a touch more momentum, if you ask me. But if you can see there, you look at me taking these more riskier jumps, saying that you get a lot more, uh, you get a lot, 
I guess, a lot less nervous doing those kind of jumps when you actually familiarize yourself with the game. So that's kind of a fun thing. You'll see that I'm able to take these jumps and, and take a lot more risks. And the way that you double jump is that the double jump kind of resets the momentum. I actually like that a lot. I think it actually works. I was talking to about, it, uh, about it with Canadian guy A and we were saying that like at first it kind of seems a little bit jarring, but it actually works in terms of what the double jump is meant to be. The double jump is by no means overpowered, which I think is hugely important. Whenever you add new abilities to a game, like in Crash 3, you, know, you have the risk of basically overpowering things or making things change too much. For example, the Bazooka is basically a game-ending ability. There's like almost, once you've done that, you basically have no reason to play the game like legit again, because you can just, you can just cheat it. Um, but yeah, I'm slowing this footage down because of, because of my three minutes, I just want to I'm gonna show it all off and it's it's beautiful frame rate. Uh, this is just, it's, I can't wait till you guys get your hands on this game as well. There you go, hands on impression, yeah. I can't wait till you guys get your hands on it as well. It's something where you can look at the footage of course and be like, oh yeah, this looks cool. But actually playing it yourself is amazing. I just wanna point out as well, just once again, they actually noted in you know the release and the, the sort of the press stuff that this is not, you know, this is not final. There's actually a few little glitches here and there that are not fully done. You know, things like performance are not fully optimized. I'm playing this on the PS4 Pro, which uh, handles it really damn well, if you ask me. I, I think it's excellent, but it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely exciting to see that it runs with really, really, even in this version, really minimal frame drops. Um, and loading screens are not too bad. Definitely better on the Pro than on the original. I tested it on the first one first, but yeah. So you guys have, you know, you've seen a lot of footage from this level, uh, which is great, but I'm really excited for you to essentially click onto the next one and check out the Cortex stuff. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. This is, uh, we're gonna show some clips here just of the whole, of all the stuff on the level so you can hear the music and the sound effects. It's honestly sounding great. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you with the next one. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.